This channel is proudly partnered with the What The Funk shop. Please check out their store for all sorts of products. They have dice, accessories, Game Master screens, home decorations and many other things. You will find the link in the description and in the pinned comment. And make sure that you use my code for a special discount. Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Walking Dead Universe RPG. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this tabletop RPG based on the popular zombie apocalypse franchise, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about fighting the dead, specifically swarm size and threat. These are two very important factors when it comes to your survivability against the hordes or swarms of walkers or zombies. When it comes to the swarm size, this is pretty logical. You have a number of walkers, and depending on that specific number, it represents a swarm size value. For example, if you have 5 to 10 walkers, it's swarm size 1. If they are 21 to 50 walkers, it's swarm size 3. If they are 51 to 100 walkers, it's swarm size 4, and so forth. As you eliminate walkers, or as more walkers join in, this value is going to change. Now when it comes to the threat level, you could be facing perhaps 100 walkers, but if they are too far away, then the threat level is going to be quite low. This varies between 0 to 6. Or perhaps you are facing 10 walkers, but they are pretty close to you, perhaps within arm's reach, then the threat level is going to be quite high. The threat level is usually increased by rolling a walker on a stress die and messing up or failing a skill roll to avoid walkers, or by facing a group of walkers that has been placed in a location beforehand by the game master, perhaps getting you caught in a pincer maneuver sort of situation. It can also increase if there is something done in the game that attracts walkers, such as making noise. In situations where increasing the threat level seems illogical or not appropriate, the game master may instead let a player character or non-player character suffer a single walker attack or even increase the swarm size by one step. You can avoid these swarms of walkers by carrying out stealth maneuvers, it usually involves a mobility check. Or perhaps you can also smear your body with the remains of other walkers to try to trick them. Now when it comes to reducing the threat level, this is not so easy. You can perhaps put some space between you and the walkers, or find a way to hide or use a barrier as cover. There could be various ways of avoiding or putting some obstacles between you and the walkers, but it is definitely a difficult thing to do. And this concludes this part of the review, in the next part we are going to talk about fighting the walkers. Swarm size is important because it could be considered the health of the swarm itself. As you destroy walkers, the swarm size will decrease and things will be not so dangerous. But what if just a few walkers are in your face? then the threat level is going to be considerable. Sure, it's going to be somewhat easier to eliminate that group of walkers, but they still represent an imminent danger. And you will see how all of this plays out in the next part of this review series. Thank you for watching this part of the review, don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, consider joining as a member or using the super thanks button. You can also check out the pinned comment below. This has been Abraham L. Jaguar, a professional game master. I am currently unavailable for professional sessions, but I will put my contact information in the description and in the pinned comment for when I am available again. And remember, master roleplay and you will master the game. Once again, thank you and see you later.